All right, so this is going to be the continuation of this car. So we, we drew this up uh, ugly and slow. All right, and uh, after I watched that last video, I realized that I forgot to put the um, initials on it. All right, so we need, uh, we need some initials on here. So uh, what I'm going to do just to, uh, just to make it a, a little bit more ugly and slow, I'm going to uh, put them back here. Now, I could put initials right here on this surface. Um, you know, you, you want something flat to put your initials. You don't necessarily have to have it. But, um, but at the stage that you guys are, as far as uh, CAD cam and all that stuff, it'd probably be easier if we just stuck to, um, you know, something relatively simple. So um, I'm going to go in and open up a sketch on this surface here. I think I am anyway. There we go. All right. I'm going to grab the line tool. And I'm simply going to... Let's go something like that. I'll make this distance here. Well, first things first, let me make that flat. So you see how it can should be able to move. Let's see here. You see how that can move up and down? So I'm gonna make this distance. Um you know, 0.75. Okay. I'll stretch this out, let it connect there, stretch this, let it connect there. And then I'm just simply going to cut that away. Okay. Just like that. Something real good and ugly. So now we need to put our initials in there. So I'm going to open up a sketch there. I'll tell you what, I'm going to look at it like this from the back. I'm going to grab my text tool, same thing we've done in, uh, in, in Mac 150. All right, I'm just going to open up, do a text box just like, text box just like that. And I'm just going to say ugly and slow 2021. Okay, I'm going to center justify that. And then I'm going to change the height. Something like that. Okay, and of course you can change the, the font to whatever you want. You know, we covered that in the, the other video. Just uh, kind of whatever. Let's see here. Go impact. And actually with this font, we can probably get a little bigger. There we go. can drag that wherever you want it. So something like that. Make that horizontal. Of course you can always um, tell you what, do this a different way. Grab a line tool, like that, like that. Make them both horizontal, and then set them both to equal so that that will center it up, okay? So, you know, if I change it, it it'll stay centered, okay? All right, so once you get your sketch, once you get it placed wherever you want it, uh, and all this stuff was covered in another video, I'm not going into great detail here, um, but once you get that where you want it, then we are just going to do an extruded cut. And all I'm doing is just clicking E for that. All right, and you click that profile. Drag that down a little bit. And I'm going to go negative three thousandths. 
and then OK. Now, when we engrave this, we're not actually going to cut all this out. We're simply going, going to trace this line. All right, so it's not actually going to remove all this material. Um, you know, obviously we would need a very, very small end mill to do that. And we're not, we're not going down that road. We're just going to, going to trace it basically. Okay. All right. So I would say that our design is, uh, sufficiently ugly and slow. Good to, good to proceed. So I'm going to save that. All right. I'm going to jump over here to manufacture. All right, so this is where I did my first ops. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and regenerate all that. So it wouldn't re it wouldn't regenerate. It says the operation has missing references. Do you want to clear those selections? Yes. So what it was of my original material where I had selected certain edges to be my Z and X axis, I have since deleted those. So it wasn't able to create my setup because the lines that I used to create my setup were gone. So I'm just going to do this again. So my Z axis, pick something in my Z axis, just like that. Model box point, everything else looks good. I'm gonna go to stock, and it looks like I'm trying to take all, take equal amounts off each side. I don't want to do that, so I'm just going to go in in my model position and my height. I'm gonna go offset from top, and I'm going to offset ten thousandths, just like that. And, and all you're going to do when you set your offsets, um, you know, you're, you're simply going to take 10,000 off the top of your material. All right. So obviously you're going to, you're going to measure, you know, set all your tools off the saddle of the vise, measure from the saddle up to the top of your part and then take off 10,000 and you're good. Nothing else you need to do there. All right. And okay. Now some other stuff has changed in this model. So, you know, I've got references in here that are no longer there. So I'm going to generate these individually. See what happens. That one did fine. Now my, my, my roughing end mill. So when I generate that, look at what it's trying to do. It's not at all what we want. So I'm going to edit. I'm going to come in here. And it tried to select that chain. Obviously, that's not what I want. I want that chain. And then as far as my depth, I want to go down as far as I can. You don't have to do this. You can do all this work from the other side. But I like doing it from here because I don't want any extra material on the sides you know, for when I drill my hole so I can get my depths just right. So if I go, well, I'll tell you what, from my selection, I'm going to say this surface here, and I'm going to go minus 25. So I'm going to go to that surface plus 25 thousandths deep when I'm roughing. All right. And my optimal load, 50 thousandths with a half inch roughing end mill is going to be just fine. Uh, we're going to leave 20 thousandths radially, zero axially. That's good. So there's my strategy. Looks good. So now I need to finish the outside. Okay, so my contour selection here, my heights, my bottom reference is going to be here, negative 0.025. All right, now I have on this one, I have compensation type in computer. So I'm using a 3 8 in mill 
but I'm comping it in the computer, all right? And the name of my strategy is finish outside, comp me, all right? Uh, always a good idea to, to add comp to your finish passes whenever possible so that you can work the dimensions in. All right, so we're going to go uh, multiple finish passes. We'll do two finish passes at five thousandths each. And our finish overlap is going to be 125, and we will repeat finish pass. So all that should be good. And I'm actually going to do my entry position. I'm going to choose where I want my entry position. All right, if I do my entry position right here, then watch what's going to happen. That's where it's going to, going to ramp in and ramp out. And you're going to be left with a little bit of a, a little surface imperfection there. And, and that, that's fine, all right? Because more than likely, you guys are going to be polishing and sanding and all the stuff on, the, on these cars or painting or whatever you want to do. Um, and and that, that's fine, all right? But what do we do when it matters? All right? What do we do when that surface needs to be clean? All right? You can pick where you want to enter. In my entry position, I'm just going to choose back here. All right, so I've got an alarm. Let's see here. Oh, I accidentally did pre-drill position. Okay, so now it's comping on right there. It's exactly what I wanted. Okay, so that's good. These, this one, all of these should be good now. So all I'm doing is uh, I'm clicking here, pressing and holding shift, and clicking here, and then right click generate. All that should be good, steel. All right, now my deburring strategy, that's gonna change. So if I try to generate that, telling me that I've got some issues. So I'll tell you what, we're gonna come back to that and I will go ahead, well, I need to do this pocket. All right, so the first thing you need to do when you're thinking about doing a pocket is figuring out what tool you can use. All right, so I just I for inspect and my radius is two inches, I'm sorry, 200 thousandths, which means I can use a 3 8 cutter. All right, so let me uh, let me kind of draw you something here so that you can really hammer that uh, that idea home. So, if this is my cutter, okay. So if I set that to 0.375, I can cut this radius. See, I can come in here and cut that radius. But if this was a half inch cutter, I cannot cut that radius. All right, so 375 is gonna be the biggest tool that we can use, biggest nominal tool that we can use. We don't have a 400 thousandths end mill, okay? Um, and obviously you can go smaller than that, obviously. Okay, so we do not need that sketch. So go back to manufacture. So I need to cut that pocket. Okay, so I'm gonna go right here, right click, new operation, 2D milling, go 2D adaptive clear. All right, so let's grab that 3 8 end mill. Right here, select, and my geometry is going to be there. The bottom height where I've got selected contours, that should be fine. If not, we'll come back and fix it. My optimal load, I'll set that to about 50 thousandths. We'll leave 10 
in the X and the Z. And I'm going to helix in. Okay. So let's see what that looks like. So it gave me an alarm. So if I show log, it says empty toolpath. All right. That, that's, that's all it gives me. It says empty toolpath. So if I go back and look, I can almost guarantee that the problem is right here. So what it's trying to do, that number right there, that 0.35625, it's trying to drive a circle. I, I think that's, uh, is it like 90% or something? Um, yeah, that doesn't tell me, but it's, it's a percentage of the diameter of the cutter. Okay, no, that slot is too wide for me to drive a circle that big. So if I change that to point 0.1, now it's cutting. All right, so if you, if you see that right there, let me change that and let you see exactly what that does. If I change this to point 0.025, now it's cutting a, a significantly smaller circle. Okay, go back up here and let's just change this to 150 and see what happens. All right, that was too big. So point one was good. Okay, so that's our, that's our pocket. It's roughed. Well, it's not finished, it's, it's simply roughed. So now I'm going to Create a derived operation, right click, create derived operation, 2D milling, and we're gonna do a contour. Okay? So it's already got my geometry selected. My heights are good. All I'm gonna do is multiple finish passes. I'm a fan of flex passes. You don't have to do it, but I'm a fan of it, especially on one-off parts. We'll go a 125 finish overlap and our lead in our lead in all that stuff should be good but our entry position I'm gonna click that right there and okay all right so it's leading in right there so it's leading out at a different spot which is fine so if I change this right here I put that at zero, it's going to lead in and lead out at the same spot. See? But I don't want that. I want a little bit of overlap. You don't have to. I like doing a little bit of overlap. Okay? So now our pocket is roughed and finished. All right, and if you want to, you can, so this, I'm going to name this. So I'm going to drag this up to here. And I'm going to drag this up to here. So now it'll face rough out the OD or finish rough out the outside finish the outside rough the pocket finish the pocket and then go on to drilling and all that other stuff so we still need to deburr so I'm going to right click edit I've already got my deburring tool selected obviously it, it messed up a lot of my contours when I changed the model so I will just go in and reselect them And go over here. If we do a 45 thousandths chamfer tip offset, that, that should be good. We'll see what happens. Okay. So, 
couple things worth noting here. I've got some stuff that's going to the wrong side. Well, actually, all of it's going to the wrong side, except for these. If you look, you see where it's plunging down into my material. That's an easy fix. Come in here back to contours. Click the arrows. And that reverses them. And now OK. So still having some issues here. So I'll tell you what, I'm going to delete those. Now everything should be nicely deburred. So I'm going to go back to where I spotted these holes right here. And I'm going to right click, create derived operation, drilling, drill. And then I'm simply going to say, okay. So I've got spotting right here and then I've got spotting again here. Okay. So I'm going to rename this deburr tapped holes so what happens with those roll form taps is a lot of times the material is pushed back up uh, let me pull up a graphic real quick okay sadly I could not find a good graphic to uh, to show what I'm what I was trying to explain so I'll just talk about it um, the roll form taps don't actually cut a thread. They just basically, uh, they, they pretty much just form the threads. They, they thread down in there and they displace the material inside the hole in the shape of the thread. Um, they create a really, really strong thread uh, it, and it doesn't make any chips because it's not cutting anything. Um, so what happens is a lot of times material will kind of pop back up so you'll have a nice little clean hole and then when you thread or roll form tap material will kind of pucker back up on the on the outside so the the standard procedure for using roll form taps is you spot it drill it tap it and then deburr it okay um, most of the time you can simply repeat your spot drill cycle but if you look we need to go a little deeper so i'm just going to right click edit and i'm going to go maybe 35 thousandths deep and we'll see what that looks like on graphics all right so if you if you look yeah, see, looks like I don't have enough flute length. Okay. So, I'm going to edit this. So, I'm going 25 thousandths deeper than the, than the part. So, my end mill needs to have at least 1.25 inches of flute length. Okay. Tell you what, I'm gonna uh, pause the video. I'm gonna run down to the crib and I'm going to grab uh, one of these 3 8 end mills and take a look and make sure that we've got enough flute length. All right, so I just went down there and looked and uh, looks like the 3 8 aluminum cutting end mills that we have uh, do have an inch and a quarter flute length, but that opens up a good conversation because you need to have the tools in mind that you're going to use for this car. Okay. Um, no, yeah, ideally we would have this big tool list and all this stuff and hopefully we'll get to that point uh, some someday. But as far as right now, you need to go in the crib and see what tools you have available to you. 
um, and then you need to post your code according to that. Um, and it may be something that you have to change your model a little bit because we don't have the tools that can, that can cut a certain feature. Um, so that's something that you need to think about um, is the availability of tools. Okay, now we've got a really good selection of um, ball nose end mills, um, but it looks like a lot of our flat stuff has, has either been broken or, or something. We had a, a pretty good supply at the beginning of this semester, but a lot looks like a lot of it has, uh, has bit the dust uh, for whatever reason. Okay, so um, we, do, we do have inch and a quarter uh, flute length on this 3 8 end mill. And, uh, and we have inch and a quarter flute length on the roughing end mill as well. So I'm gonna go in here and I'm going to edit both these tools. All right, so I'm gonna go right here and looks like my shoulder length is going to be 1.25 and my length of cut is going to be 1.25. And if, if, you, if you look at it, we're actually going 1.275. So, because remember, we're going 25 more. Um, but from what I've seen, if an end mill tube says that it's 1.25 flute length, as long as it hadn't been reground, it's going to have, you know, most of the time, plus 30, plus 40 thousandths of flute length. Um, now, that, that's not a rule, but that's just something that I've always noticed is, um, you know, I, I've never been afraid to take an inch and a quarter cut with an end mill that has an inch and a quarter flute length. Um, no, obviously you want to you want to look at that. You want to check that. Uh, you know, take your set of calipers and lay it on that tool and make sure you have enough flute length. But um, just for for this demonstration, I'm going to make this 1.275. Okay, just like that, and then accept. And then I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to edit this tool. And cutting data. Oh, I'm sorry, cutter. So that's going to be 1.275. And accept. And all the, the operations that was using that tool now have to be regenerated. I'm just going to shift click generate. Okay. So now we will run it on the graphics. Okay, so it looks like I'm, I'm still seeing a uh, bump here for whatever reason. Let's go edit. I'm just trying to see something here. Just bear with me. Hmm. Still showing a crash. And normally, you know, stuff like this I don't get real, you know, upset about because, you know, I, I try to be smarter than that. I try to make sure that I'm using tools that have the right flute length, but it's always easier if you just set this stuff correctly. I'm just kind of troubleshooting now, trying to figure out what, uh, what the deal is. Yeah, so it was, a, it was a flute length issue, is all that was. Okay. I'm going to turn off my model. I'm going to look right there. It does look like it's been deburred, but I may want to hit it a little bit deeper. So let's, uh, let's go right here. And instead of going, I think that number was 35, let's go minus 40. Run that on graphics. Okay, so that looks like what we want. So I'm going to go comparison. 
everything looks good. All the surfaces have cleaned up. Looks good. All right. So, uh, looks like op one is done now. So, I'll go ahead and save that. Now, if you want to uh, post process, uh, you know, when you're ready to post process this, and again, this is the same thing we've been doing in Mac 150, all that stuff. So, I'm going to go ahead and run through that real quick. So, post process, all right, and then I'm going to go Haas pre next gen control for the mill. Haas pre next gen control. Where is it at? I'm going to turn this to milling pre next gen control. Okay. And uh, we will say ugly and slow John Doe op one and your your program number whatever one four three oh one whatever you want to make that and again what I like to do is turn off preload tool use G187 use sequence numbers and built-in tolerance and I like to set that to five thousands five tenths I'm sorry and then you simply post it okay and then you save it and it opens up and everything's good. All right, I'm not going to post it right now, but uh, I'm not going to do the side holes because I feel like you guys can do that. Um, but I, I am going to jump over to the next op and we will, um, we will discuss all of that, all the 3D work, which is going to be all pretty much uh, new-ish to you. Um, you know, we have done some Mac 150 stuff. For, for that, you know, we've done those uh, in-shop parts with a little bit of 3D, but it's not a whole lot. Um, so we'll go over that and uh, here in just a second. <clears throat> All right, so let's jump right into the uh, second op, which I would call the main op. All right, so what we're going to do for that is uh, I'm going to minimize all these, and again, I'm you're going to need to do the 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 operations for the. Um, let's see if mine will even do it. Mine will even generate. Yeah, I didn't figure mine was going to generate, but you're going to need to do the side holes. Uh, I'm going to leave you guys to that because I feel like y'all are uh, y'all are able to to uh, draw that and post process that, and generate that code uh, to do the side holes. Um, so you should be good there. All right now. The, uh, on this main op, what I'm going to do is new setup. All right, I'm going to go select Z axis and X axis. So my Z is going to be here. My X is going to be here. Okay. And I'm going to go model box point. I'm going to select right there. Then I'm simply going to flip that. So my car is going to be sitting like this. Okay. So make sure you load it on the fixture correctly. Make sure that you've got, you know, your, your short side pointing the right way. Okay. Because if not, you know, you're going to end up with a, with a situation. All right. So make sure you got all your holes pointing the right way. Make sure you've got it oriented correctly. All that good stuff. All right, now I'm going to go to stock next, and I'm going to go ahead and tell it that I have plenty of extra stock, okay? So I'm going to say fixed size box, and I'm going to go ahead and be plus here. I'm going to say 7.25 in the X, all right, which is about an eighth inch bigger than it is, two inches in the Y, which is what it is. And if you want to go a little plus on that, you can, just to be safe. And then I'm going to say two inches in the Z, okay? Now, if you look, it, it basically thinks that my model is in the middle of my stock now, but it's not. You remember, we only took 10 thousandths off this side. So I'm going to say offset from bottom 10 thousandths. Okay. So now it knows that it has all that extra material on the top. All right. I'm going to say. Um, 
ugly and slow. Uh, main op, John Doe. And then we'll name it 14304, whatever. Name it whatever you want. I don't care. Name it your birthday, your cell phone number. I don't care. Okay. So now we have our setup. I'm going to go ahead and slow double click that. And I'm going to say main 3D op. Okay, right click, new operation, and we're going to start with a 3D adaptive. All right, so a 2D adaptive simply clears material, like you, you give it a constraint, you say stay within this fence to this level in the Z depth, and it cuts all that away, okay? So 2D adaptive is great for, you know, two and a half D parts, all right? but we need it to get in here and cut all this material and all you know we don't want to specify all these depths so we're going to say 3d milling adaptive clearing all right now i'm going to grab my half inch rougher And I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, let me, uh, let me backtrack here, let me backtrack. Let's face all this extra material off the top. That would probably be the easiest thing to do. So new operation 2D face. So let's grab our face mill, select, okay. Stock, stock contours, that's fine. All right, our bottom height is model top, which is great. And our passes, let's, uh, let's go uh, 1.5 on pass extension. And our step over, uh, we shouldn't need. Uh, we, we should be able to just take this pretty much in one shot. But let's just, uh, let's just play it safe and go 1.5. Multiple depths. I want to cut 50 per. Okay. And then I tell you what, I'm going to go ahead and leave 10,000 on the top of the part. And let's see what that looks like. Okay. So looks looks pretty good. Now, I mean, you can you can obviously tighten all this stuff up if you want. You can, you know, I wouldn't necessarily recommend taking more than 50 thousandths off, um, being that this setup is going to be kind of high. Like it's, it's going to be a tall setup. It's not going to be real short and stubby. Um, so it's, it's going to be more of a tendency for that part to want to kind of pick up. Um, so, you know, I've got 10 minutes of facing right now. So if you want to go in there and bump up some of your feed rates and spindle speeds and all that stuff, you know, feel free to do that. Um, you know, don't get too crazy with it, but, um, you know, adjust that how you, how you see fit. Okay. So we've got... Uh, a lot of material cut off the top. All right, so it's going to cut that down to near net. Again, we're leaving, what, what, what do we leave, 10 thousandths on the top. So the next thing we're going to do is new operation, 3D, adaptive clearing. Going to grab my half inch rougher, select. All right, and I'm going to, all of this stuff should be good. I'm going to tell it to stay within stock boundaries. Okay. My optimal load, I'm going to change that to about, let's go 50. My maximum roughing step down, I'm going to call that a half inch, and my fine step down is going to be 50. Again, that was covered in, uh, in the Mac 150 modules, that the fine step down versus the, the major step down, maximum, all that good stuff. So let's take a look at that. And it's going to probably take a little while to generate. And if you look, it's, it's trying to cut that extra material off the top. Like if you look, see, it thinks it's trying to cut extra material, but that material's already been removed, so we need to address that. We'll have some air cuts here. 
So we can address this in, uh, in two different ways. We can either do rest machining. Um, so we can say source, so we can do rest machining from previous operation. And that will recognize what the last operation cut away. Or we could change it in the heights tab. We could just say, so I'll tell you what, let's go back. Let's do this. Let's turn off rest machining. And let's go top height from model top. So essentially the same thing. Okay. So now that part has been roughed. So let's take a look at this. Okay, so it got everywhere that it could. Obviously there's some areas that it couldn't get. So if I do like a comparison, and if I do that uh, tolerance of about 30 thousandths, you see that that big tool couldn't get all down in here. Okay, just can't do it. So, change that back to operation. Okay, so now we need to come in here and cut all this other stuff. Okay, so what I'm going to recommend on these uh, on these flat on this flat surface at least is I'm going to recommend that we do this with a contour, right? Because we don't have a radius here, so we need that flat shoulder. So I'm going to right click, 2D milling, 2D contour. I'm going to grab my 3 8 finish end mill. Okay, come right here to my contour selection. I'm gonna select that contour. Okay, all this stuff should be good. I'm gonna intentionally kind of leave something out so we can come back to it. And then, okay. So let's run this on graphics. Okay, so it only cleaned up that wall and right there. We need to clean up this entire surface. All right, so what we're going to do is come right here, edit. For passes, I'm going to do multiple finish passes. Let's just do five with a step over of 200 thousandths. Let's see where that lands us. Not enough. You see that? So edit and, and got there. There's many different ways to do this. Um, this is probably the simplest. Um, so I'm going to change this to six with a 3000 or 300,000 step over and that will clean up. Actually, we've got one cut that's going to be kind of wasted. Okay, so that will clean up. That looks good. That's what we're looking for. All right, and I don't want to get too in depth on the lead ins and lead outs and all that stuff, but but all this right here should be good. All right, so on the on to the next thing, and that's going to be ball milling. So I'm going to right click, new operation, 3D milling, and let's start with a parallel contour or a parallel strategy. So we'll go parallel. We're going to get a, well, doesn't have, we don't have it yet, so we need to build a, uh, a ball nose. So build a ball nose. We're going to say a 375 ball nose, and you may need a quarter inch. You may need a half inch, whatever, all right? But use the biggest ball nose that you can. Okay. And the flute length on the ball noses we have here about one inch. Cutting data, let's go 10,000 RPM. 
and we need to go about a hundred inches a minute. Ramp feed rate will be about 50. Plunge will be about 25. And this is going to be a 375 ball rose. Okay. Now for our geometry. Now we need to give it a contour to stay within. So we need to give it um, an area to, to stay within. Right? Um, now, you can do this a couple of different ways. You can either select the entire car, like this, or you can select certain areas. So like, let's say that I wanted to just machine this area. Then it, it's going to stay within these confines. All right? But I want to do the entire car. I don't necessarily want to do this, but we'll go ahead and go over it. Um, it's not going to hurt anything. Now, I can always do like avoid touch surfaces and, and click that surface, but we'll just uh, we'll just roll with this, okay? And then heights, bottom heights going to be uh, model bottom basically. All right, and then passes. So our step over that's going to be how far the tool steps over each time. So I'm just going I'm going to put 50 in here just for now. And I just want to see where we land. Now, for stock to leave, I'm going to leave 10 thousandths on all surfaces for now because this is going to be my semi-finish pass. It's not going to be my final finish pass. Okay? It actually did pretty good. I'm actually really, really impressed with that. All right? So, let's... uh. Let's come in here, and I'm afraid that that cutter is going to be taking too much, you know, when it bogs down into these corners. I'm, I'm worried that it's going to try to take too much. So what I will do is, first off, I need to cut on contact point boundary. Let's look at it when I have contact point boundary on, okay? So this is called waterfalling. Well, this is what I call it, waterfalling. All right, so to get rid of that, need to come in here <coughs> and get rid of this offset and this is something that you guys are going to have to play with all right this, this is definitely something y'all are going to need to to monkey around with and just kind of tinker with because you know obviously this cut right here i don't want that all right but i need contact point boundary turned on okay because what what that what contact point boundary does is if you hover over this, it gives you a really good explanation of it. Okay? So if it's disabled, the center of the tool will only go to that perimeter. All right? But if you have it enabled, the contact point, wherever the tool is contacting that surface, will go to that edge, which is exactly what you want. Okay? And, uh, you know, of course, we can always, you know, like we can do avoid touch surfaces, you know, like stay away from, oh, not the entire model. You know, we can say stay away from these surfaces, all that sort of stuff. So let's see what that looks like with those turned on. Okay. So that that's an option. See, I've got some stuff down here. And it add to my avoid surfaces. Actually, let's go ahead and click up. Oh. Oh. Okay, looking better. Okay, so let's run that on graphics and see what it looks like. Okay, so for the most part, it's cut. Now, you're not getting a real valid representation because it looks like we still have some, you know, weird places here. But if I run both ops together, it'll be a more valid representation.
Okay, so that's what it's going to look like after the semi finish pass. Okay, and actually, remember, I said I was worried about it cramming down in this corner because if you look. See, the last place that I cut with that rougher is right here. So there's going to be that much material down in that corner that this strategy is going to try to cut. Ball nose end mills are not made to cut a lot of material. So I'm going to come in here. And uh, I tell you, well, you, you can battle this a couple of different ways. So you can do a smaller step over. You know, like 25 or 20 or something like that. All right. Or you can simply do a little bit more stock to leave. So, like if we go with a 15 and a 20,000 step over, I think those two things will make for a, a, a more mild cut. Okay. So that's what it's going to look like. So now we need to go in and do our actual finish. Okay, and I like that strategy, so we'll, we'll keep that strategy. So I'm going to go right-click, Create Derived, 3D, Parallel. Okay. And all this stuff should be good still. All that's good. Except now I'm going to turn off stock to leave, and I'm going to do a little bit finer step over. And if you want to, if you want to do like 90 degrees, you can. It'll cut this way. Okay. Um, you know, personally, I, I don't I don't particularly like that. I like to run along my longest path. Um, but that that's you know you can do whatever you want to do there. Your car. Let's set that back to zero. Okay. Looks like I need to do some avoid surfaces back here now. Might be easier if I just do. Well, it didn't go well. Tell you what, I, I screwed that up, so let's go okay. Let's see what it looks like without those. All right, so water falling big time. So let's fix that. Try to click this one. Got it. Okay, so all those surfaces are clicked now. So it will avoid all of those surfaces. So let's take a look. And I, right now I'm at a 38 minute run time. Okay, so it looks, looks pretty good. I'm happy with it. And we're okay. And the only thing we have left to do is the engraving. All right, and of course, if you wanted to deburr it, you know, you can go ahead and deburr it now. You know, put your chamfers on all your surfaces and all that good stuff. So let's go ahead and engrave. And again, we've, we've covered this in the, uh, 
think it was in shop part four, how to engrave. But we will go new operation, 2D milling, and trace. Now, for this, we will do the, uh, looks like we don't have it yet. So we will uh, we'll create another tool. It's gonna be an eighth inch ball mill. 0.125 ball mill. And that's gonna be 0.375 flute length. And, you know, I'd go about 20 inches a minute on this. Okay. So we've got 10,000 RPM, 20 inches a minute uh, on cutting, lead in, lead out, and ramp, and then 10 on plunge. And again, I mean, guy, this is up to y'all. I mean, I want y'all to decide all this. I don't, I don't want to go through this video and tell you guys exactly what to do, all right, because I don't know what your setup's like, all right? I'm just showing you the, the, the fundamentals. Select, and now, when I go to my geometry, now is where I go in here and I click each and every one of these. Now, this is time consuming and I wish there was a better way, but I have not found a better way. Now, what you don't want to do is click the top on all of them and, you know, mostly all of them and then like accidentally click the bottom line on one because then it's going to do that one significantly deeper well significant it's going to do a three thousands deep or however deep you carried it well like this one didn't uh didn't want to behave Okay. And then our sideways compensation, you need to make sure you've got that set to center. Okay. And you will do a zero, well, I'm sorry, your axial offset, this is where you do your depth, all right? Now, if we clicked the bottom, had we clicked the bottom here instead of the top, then we would leave this to zero, all right? But me personally, I like having the control right here. I like being able to set this as my depth, all right? And three thousandths with an eighth inch ball mill, that's just something that I've, that I've found does really well. So we will go okay. And there is your strategy, all right? There it is. So let's run this car complete. Tell you what, before I do that, go ahead and save it. And guys, when y'all are working on these models, um, especially when you start adding 3D tool paths to them, then they get really big. So they, they got a tendency to crash your machine, crash your computer. Okay. So don't, uh, don't make the mistake of not saving. All right, and what you're seeing right there, that's simply a graphics issue. That, that's, not, that's not what your finish is going to look like. Um, that's simply a, a graphics deal right there.
the same as the same as you know like that. that that's that's simply graphics. Okay, so that should be the uh, the car. So let's do like a comparison. And what in the world? So it's uh it's it's trying to uh, look at my first. It's comparing the wrong image, basically comparing the wrong model. So let me run that one more time. Hopefully it'll do a little better this time. Comparison. Yep. All right. So now we're uh, we're good. All right. Everything looks well. Hey, we got a tolerance of thirty thousand. We set that to five. We are looking pretty good. Set that to you know three. It right, looks like you know it still thinks we have a little bit of material on some of these surfaces, but we know that we don't. So that's a that's a graphics deal. Okay. Turn that off. Close. And you should be good to, uh, well, let me, let me rephrase that. If this was your car, you would be good to post-process and create this car. All right, so we could, uh, you know, I could post-process this and go build this car. Um, I sincerely hope that you guys are not going to copy this design and simply uh, phone this one in. All right, you want to make sure that that you uh, that you've got a design that you're proud of, that you do all your own work, all that good stuff. So uh, there it is. That's the uh, the ugly and slow 2021 car um, design, cammed, all that good stuff. All you would need is to go out there and run it. Um, one one other thing that's worth mentioning, guys, is uh, right here. I've had a handful of people in my class uh, that that come across this issue. Um, and they, they, you know, always ask me, you know, how do I fix it? Um, so when you run just this one, right? So let's, let's run just like this. Well, didn't mean to run all of it. All right, so if you decide to, to well, actually, I mean, it doesn't even matter how you decide. When you set your offsets for this, so for mine, I've got, I've got it set to center, okay? So when you touch off with your edge finder, make absolutely certain that you're touching off on your part, not your stock. So I've had a couple of students that have, Built a car like this, done, you know, well, actually a couple of students, not on this project, but on other projects that have done everything just right. But then when they flip it over, they touch off on the saw cut surfaces or they touch off on stock. You, you can't do that. You have to touch off on your model, All right? So whatever that looks like, you may have to take a one, two, three block and stick it under here and touch off on that and then subtract the, the block. You know, whatever that looks like, um, you, you, can't, you can't touch off on stock or saw cut or any of that stuff. It has to be that machine surface that has, um, you know, a relationship with, with the, uh, the original origin, okay? Um, no, just because you, you took your stock and touched off center um, on the, the other side, if the material is cut crooked, then it doesn't matter. Um, I'll tell you what, let me, uh, let me save that. And I'm going to go new project. I just want to, uh, I just want to show you something. So I want you to imagine that we've got a piece of material. All right, and I'm simply going to draw... something like this. 
make those equal and parallel all that good stuff make one of those horizontal now um, I'm not gonna work well go ahead and make it make it look at least close to right and see from here to here that material was like 7.125 or something just because Come on. Okay. So, when you when we saw this material, you know, let's say that this stuff comes in at a 10 degree angle. So that would be uh, you know, 90 plus 10. All right, so let's say that this is your material right here. All right, and, and you touch off on op one. All right, so you come over here and you say, all right, touch off here, touch off here, and you you end up finding the center just like that, right? So that I'm, we're just gonna say that this is my center. I'll tell you what, let's go ahead and make it center. So that that is that is my center right there, right? I see that. I just set it to midpoint. Okay, so that's the center. So if I inspect from here to here, 3.5625, from here to here, 3.5625. Okay, that's the center. So this would be op one. Okay, you touch off, everything's good. You cut your part, all that stuff is relative to that origin. All right, so then you flip it over and you touch off. And let's find the center here. Do you see that difference? Now look, if I inspect from here to here, 3.5625, here to here, 3.5625. But why are they three, 352,007 cents apart? Okay, it, it, it's you, you have to touch off on your part, not your stock. All right, no, own op one, you've got no option. You have to touch off on your stock. You have, you have no option. All right, but for op two, op three, op four, op five, op six, whatever, you can't touch off on your material, all right, because it's cut crooked, it's cut goofy, it, 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 it's not square, it's it, none of that stuff, okay? So you have to be mindful of that when you're when you're doing your offsets all right um so just make sure that when you are running this after you run your op one you know when your car looks something like this all right make sure you're not touching off here 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 or here and definitely don't touch off on the, on the top. I mean, that, that's not that's not flat either. You, did, you know, if you want to touch off on your fixture or what, whatever, you know, something that's real good and flat. All right. So um, so we designed the car. We came to car. We talked about how you need to set up the car and the fixture, all that good stuff. Um, now, uh, the rest of it's up to you guys. Uh, Y'all have to design the car. Obviously, um, submit. Uh, your 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 design, all your cam, all that stuff. Uh, it's going to be for a grade in Mac 150, um, and then the actual uh, metal parts. So the wheels, the the car, all that stuff. That's going to be a grade in Mac 223. All right. So this is a big part of your grade. Y'all remember that and uh, knock this one out of the park. Okay. And uh, good luck.